Nigeria is just coming out of a plethora of industrial actions. Although some remain unsolved, the government has gone ahead to announce the implementation of the No Work, No Pay rule. This appears to have set the government against the unions. This week's edition of the program looks at matters arising in the government's labor relations. Hello there, thank you for joining us on the program this week. I'm Gloria Umezeke. The labor force is considered a key component of driving the policy of government. Well, recently, there have been industrial actions by unions over failure of government to meet their demands. And so, government decided to take a stand against these actions. Well, what are the consequences of the latest actions? But first, what are the stories that made headlines within the week from the nation's capital? President Muhammad Buhari has ordered the immediate dismissal of the former chairman of the Presidential Task Force on Pension, Mr. Abdurashid Maina. The president issued the order after Mr. Maina resumed office, despite being declared wanted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission over the alleged misappropriation of two billion naira. The president also ordered an investigation into his recall into the civil service. In the meantime, the National Assembly is conducting its own investigation into the recall of Mr. Maina. Both chambers of the National Assembly took the decision at their separate plenary sessions. It's a big embarrassment for this government, so we need the Senate, I think, to investigate this matter and find out how did the person come back, how is it that security men are attached to him, nobody arrested him, somebody that is still on wanted list by the EFCC and now given a position of director. I want to categorically state that we cannot trust this executive, unfortunately, to do due diligence and justice to this issue. We still have the pending issue of the, I don't know whether to call him former or currently suspended secretary of the federal government. The case has still not been adequately addressed by the current administration. The Hazard Committee should be set up, uh, comprising of the vice chairman and chairman of establishment interior, judiciary, and anti-corruption to determine the circumstances of, of the director of Maynard's return to the country, two, to determine how he got back into the public service, three, his promotion to level of director after a dismissal and being on a wanted list. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The weekly Federal Executive Council meeting did not hold on the usual Wednesday this week. However, it held on Thursday and no reason was given for the shift in day. However, the Council approved the proposal for the 2018 budget ahead of its submission to the National Assembly for approval. It's the President's prerogative to submit the budget, submit his proposals and give you the details. Uh, I'll be operating above my this thing if I were to do that. That is for the president. The constitution gives that authority to the president. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has issued a subpoena compelling former President Goodluck Jonathan to appear before the court as a defense witness in the suit filed by the federal government against the former National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Olisa Metu. Mr. Metu is facing trial for allegedly receiving 400 million naira out of the $2.1 billion AMS fund from the former National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Desuki, retired. As to what happens to good luck Jonathan, the former president of Nigeria, the issue is that he was not served with the subpoena. So what the court has been trying to do is to find out the means of serving the subpoena. But in any case, the court have decided that another attempt should be made to sub in the subpoena, and the case was adjourned to 31st of this month to be, to be able to produce uh, pres former president to testify in this matter. 
The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, is raising alarm over the substitution of candidates by some political parties ahead of the Anambra governorship election. 37 political parties are contesting in the Anambra election, which is a record. Uh, it's a record for any governorship election in the history of this country. 37. They all conducted their primaries. We monitored the primaries, but I also wish to draw the attention of civil society to uh, the action of two political parties. I wouldn't mention the names here. I mentioned it when we met with the political parties about two weeks ago. We monitored the party primaries. We know those who emerged as candidates from the primaries. But somehow, somewhere between Oka and Abuja, two parties substituted the candidates. The name that they finally submitted to the commission are not the names of candidates that emerged from the party primaries which we monitored. Again, the electoral act says that if that is done, INEC has no power to disqualify any candidate nominated by his or her party. But 35 political parties are in compliance. What transpired at the primaries is what was actually transmitted to INEC. But two political parties changed the candidates. Those who emerged from the primaries are actually not the candidates that, whose names were eventually, eventually submitted to INEC. But we said that um, if any of these candidates wins or the matter is challenged in court, we'll go to the court and present the true record of what transpired at the primaries for the courts to determine what to do. We will never defend what we cannot defend. We will never defend anything that did not correctly transpire at the party um, primaries. Vice President Professor Yemu Shibajo says the unity of the country can only be achieved through godly reconciliation of every dissenting group in the country. Why are we talking about national unity, which is the other big word in this theme? Our country has since independence experienced practically every form of conflict, every form of division, and every form of crisis. Aside from parochial conflicts and killings, there have been mistrust and hostility between ethnic groups, sometimes resulting in conflicts, but mostly suppressed, manifesting in agitation for ethnic autonomy or outright secession, such as we've seen with Massos and recently with Ida. The new pathway to unity is by reconciliation through the power of God. So the way to achieve national unity is by reconciling our nation, the different tribes, the ethnicities, and even the faiths through the power of God. The answer to disunity, to hate, the response to gross wickedness lies in the church and can only be found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The federal government has recovered the sum of $85 million from the United Kingdom part of stolen money from the Malabu oil deal. At a consultative meeting on asset recovery in Abuja, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Malami, also said that Nigeria has concluded negotiation with the Switzerland for the return of the $321 million Abacha loot. It is pertinent to state at this point that recovery and repatriation of our stolen wealth stashed abroad continues to be very tedious despite several bilateral and multilateral agreements entered into between Nigeria and other jurisdictions. Even when the provisions of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption oblige state parties to facilitate the return of stolen assets to victim states, countries including Nigeria are settled with some challenges. My office has also put in place necessary machineries to hold bilateral talks with countries of interest during the Global Forum on Asset Recovery. These countries include United Kingdom, Ireland of Jersey, Gansey, and other UK territories, United States of America, Canada, Switzerland, South Africa, Panama, United Arab Emirates, Northern Ireland, and Gambia. I am also pleased to inform that Nigeria has just recovered the sum of $85 million on the Malabu restraint funds from UK.